Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today we discuss seven summer shoes mistakes that most men make. Summer changes our wardrobes and it's fun to go along with the seasons, but when it comes to shoes, summer shoes are really just for summer and so they're inherently different to the shoes that you can wear during spring, fall, and winter. Of course, people can wear absolutely anything today, and trust me, they do, but as a gentleman, there are certain classic style rules that help make you look well put together even during the peak heat of summer. Mistake number one, wearing sandals or flip-flops for anything other than very specific outdoor occasions. Sorry, gentlemen, but if you're serious about your outward appearance, wearing sandals or flip-flops on a regular basis is simply not in the cards. Unless you're rafting or walking in a rocky river bed, you should never wear sandals. The same is true for flip-flops. They're really best at the pool or by the beach, but otherwise, don't show up with them at the restaurant. Ultimately, no one wants to see your hairy toes and calluses. And that aside, I've never come across a really super high quality pair of flip-flops or sandals that just had oodles of craftsmanship in them. The second mistake is wearing sporty trainers with your trousers and elegant summer outfits. It simply doesn't go together. Trainers are fine if you ride your bike or go to and from the gym or work out in them, but outside of that, there's really no place for them in your general wardrobe. Nothing makes you look like an old grandpa than white trainers with white tennis socks, so just skip them and put on proper summer shoes. The third mistake is not understanding the difference between driving mocks, loafers, and boat shoes. All three of those are great summer shoes because they're slip-ons where you don't have to tie anything. So it's not just convenient, but usually they also have deeper cutouts, which expose your ankle more to the air, which gives a nice flow that is cooler than wearing other regular lace-up shoes. Now, what's the difference between those three shoe types? Loafers are considered to be the most formal one of the three. You can wear them with slacks, with seersuckers, even a seersucker suit, or even a regular suit. Except if it's double-breasted, then loafers are typically not appropriate. But double-breasted is not advisable through hot summers anyways, so you're good here. Sometimes people even seem to be wearing them barefoot. However, I don't suggest that if you wanna go for the barefoot look, always go with no-show socks. It's much better for your feet and for the hygiene, and it makes you more comfortable in your shoes all day. Next step down in formality are driving mocks. If you want something a little more formal, go with a penny loafer, a little less casual, go with a tassel loafer. I like suede for summer shoes because they're casual, and you can even go in more exotic colors, such as maybe gray, navy blue, or dark green. Driving mocks are a step down in terms of formality. They're usually worn inside the house or while driving, but during the summer, a lot of people wear them just on the street. They're very soft, they're comfortable, but with the typical sole that is not solid rubber, you probably wear them out prematurely if you wear them outside of the house or your car. Finally, boat shoes are the least formal. A classic staple would be a medium chestnut brown. If you wanna be a little brighter, you can go with blues or salmon reds, maybe green and blue combinations. It's a fun shoe if you adhere to the kind of waspy, northeastern American style. The fourth mistake is buying somewhat formal shoes from the uppers, such as Darby's, Oxford's, or Wingtip Brogues, that are then combined with colorful trainer soles. We get it, summer is more casual, and it also reflects in your shoe wardrobe. That being said, it's wiser to play with the colors and the leather materials, but keeping the leather sole than switching to a kind of rubber sole that is green or yellow or red. Yes, it makes you stand out in a way, but it's more clownish than tasteful. That being said, rubber soles wear much more quickly. You can just replace them very easily, and so it's not a really good long-term investment. Instead, buy a classic leather sole or a classic rubber sole and make a change at the uppers. It's a much better investment. The fifth mistake is 
buying sneakers and using them to masquerade other shoes. By that I mean people try to buy leather sneakers that are more expensive and nicer and so all of a sudden they think they can wear it for business casual or with a suit and it just looks odd and it's not meant to be worn in that way. The sixth mistake is to pack away all of your other shoes from your closet and simply use the specific summer shoes. Now, yes, you want specific summer shoes. At the same time, you can still get out your old brown loafers, for example, that you can wear in spring and maybe in the fall, or your suede desert boots. Those are all good shoes that you can utilize also during the summer. So it pays to go through your shoe closet and yes, you can set aside your black Oxfords or the triple soled boots because that's not something you wear during the summer, but brown tones, maybe reddish tones and suede letters are great for summer combinations. Last but not least, one of the biggest summer shoe mistakes is not owning a fun pair of distinct summer shoes. There are really lots of ways to have fun even with a classic men's shoe wardrobe and that can include a white pair of buckskin shoes with colorful shoelaces, for example. And in general, if you want to spice things up and you can't quite afford to invest a lot in summer shoes, just going with colorful shoelaces really changes the whole feel and the look of the shoes and you will immediately look summery with a very small investment. For a large selection of round and flat high quality waxed cotton shoelaces in over 15 different colors, please check our shop here. They're all made from Fort Belvedere and they come in packages so the more you buy the less expensive they get. Alternatively, if you're looking for shoes, look for a woven leather shoe or maybe something with a perforated leather because that will allow more air to get to your foot so you sweat less and you're more comfortable. If you like softer shoes, maybe a pair of colorful boat shoes or driving mocks or something to invest in. Apart from lighter desert boots that are unlined and actually very low, I suggest you invest in a pair of green shoes because green is really underrated, especially for summer. Lately, I've seen it much more come up in suits and sport coats and even shirts, but for shoes, it's still not really popular and it's particularly good in a darker shade such as forest green or maybe olive green and with a suede texture. Apart from that, classic spectators can work as well. Although the black and white spectators work, I think brown and white are better suited for summer because it's a less stark contrast and it just goes weather with the warmth outside. If you want to learn more about different shoe types, such as loafers or boat shoes, Oxfords, Darbys, the differences, please check out our in-depth guides on the website. And if you are interested in summer suits or the eight hallmarks of a great summer jacket, please subscribe to our channel and stuff like this comes right to your inbox. Also use the search function because we have a lot of things about summer and hot weather. In today's outfit, I'm wearing a combination with an off-white jacket that has center box pleats, which makes it easy to move around. It's made out of a thicker, coarser Panama weave fabric. It's from Ralph Lauren, purple label, and I'm combining it with a light blue open weave summery shirt and a matter silk tie in dark bottle green with blue and yellow accents from Fort Belvedere. It matches the green belt as well as my green shoes, which are made out of suede leather and are a wingtip Oxford from Scott also. To make it a little more summer without being too bright, I added dark purple shoelaces that contrast the shoes, work with the summery theme, but they're not super loud. My shirt has barrel cuffs because cufflinks would be simply too hot and so I'm wearing a little pinky ring with malachite which picks up the green color just like the pocket square which ties together the green tones of the tie and the shoe as well as the light blue of the shirt and the seersucker trousers. Because the shoes are colorful and seersucker is bright, I opted for a dark pair of over-the-calf cotton socks in navy with clocks because it contrasts the shoe as well as the pants and creates a nice combination. To learn more about how to combine shoes, pants, and socks, please check out this free PDF guide. And if you're interested in all the Fort Belvedere accessories showcased in this video, you can find them in our shop here.